in a moment. It's about organising information and evaluating. As you went, you evaluated. Is this a main point or is it additional information? You summarised and organised as you went. That's our view for where we want to get our students to. And the idea of reading is thinking. It's not just a decoding exercise. It's actually a thinking and an interaction with the text. So what do we teach? Now I have a funny thing in here going into beliefs that underpin the program because it will lead us into what do we teach? Well, the belief of AIZ is that comprehension strategy teaching needs to be a consistent focus across the school. And you've touched upon that this morning in your discussions. Start early, don't wait to grade three. A whole, <laughs> a whole school approach will achieve the best results in skilling staff and deepening understandings. And we're working together to achieve student improvement. The understanding that and belief that comprehension teaching needs to be explicit, that ongoing monitoring is an integral part of the process. And I deliberately used the word monitoring there. We've, talk, we've looked at some assessment today and assessment can help us because I think we're in agreement. The type of skills assessed in that plan are no different to the type of skills that we've said we use as proficient readers. So there is a relationship there. But the ongoing monitoring day by day, week by week, is what will produce the results that you want in terms of student development. We often say, oh, NAPLAN, it's only a snapshot, and it is only a snapshot. So what we do regarding monitoring and then adjusting our teaching in relation to the monitoring information is really crucial in making a difference. Monitoring student development over time is a means for evaluating the effectiveness of your program. And you already started to do that this morning, saying we can see that there's a particular type of skill set that we're not working toward because we want to see it in student work. All students can learn high expectations. Now that does not mean that every student starts at the same spot and we're going to turn out sausages that all weigh the same and look the same at the end. But no matter where a student begins, that we can move them along and support them and scaffold them as they go. That there is an expectation of development and growth for every student. That includes the schools in the AIZ that are, there are, we have high performing schools and one of their um, complexities, and it's the complexity for every school really, you will all have high performing students and our job with those students is to continue to build their capacity. It's not a deficit model of we only intervene for at risk, it's actually every student being given every opportunity to lift their development and performance. Teaching and learning goals must be clear and clearly articulated for students. Now, we're going to uh, continue our discussion around key comprehension strategies. These are taken from the National Inquiry into the Teaching of Reading that was published in 2005. It was sent to every school. I forgot the book this week, but I'll bring it to you and show you what it looks like. So if you're going along dusty shelves, you might find it. But you can also get it online if you want to. But these key strategies are taken from that national inquiry. Comprehension monitoring, using graphic and semantic organisers, recognition, understanding and use of story structure, question answering, question generation, summarising, activating and using prior knowledge and using mental imagery and visualising. When you look at various lists of key strategies for comprehension, they sometimes you have different wording, but they usually are around the same similar skill sets. You do find some that vary. Some include time on task as key strategies and also student disposition to learning. Also, as we go through these, you will see the relationships with the um, high reliability strategies that you've been working on. There is a strong correlation. And add your experiences to when you see the connections that we can make. But we're going to use that for this list for working through each of these strategies and talk about what could we do back at work, what would the teaching and learning around it look like. And the question is, can these be taught? 
and do we need a new wave or a further wave of explicit comprehension strategy teaching? Okay. We're not assuming that there's nothing happening. It is a further wave of explicit teaching. Do you think they can be taught? A few nods, 